Cape Peninsula, but um, the, the main section where we bird is Cape May Point or South Cape May Meadows or uh, Lower Township, which is all part of uh, Cape Island. Um, the, the, the best known area of, uh, of Cape May is the Cape May Point Lighthouse, which this is a shot of. And uh, there's a state park there in the Hawk Watch. And I need to, there. And I'd like to uh, recognize uh, on this uh, uh, Jeff Seneca, a good friend of ours, a great photographer who passed away from COVID in the spring. He had a great sense of humor. And um, he still has a website uh, for his photos that his son is, is going to keep going. And he was on the cover of American Butterflies with one of his photos. He was more than just a photographer. He was a naturalist, too. He would sit for hours to get a shot and observe. And um, uh, these, these shots were all his shots. Uh, this was at uh, Black Rock and Croton when there was ice years ago, um, one of his Merlin shots, and he, he shot insects too. And uh, uh, recently um, somebody sent me, uh, he had a shot of a red belly woodpecker uh, feeding on a bat and it looked like a red bat. And um, it's something that I didn't realize that uh, woodpeckers eat bats, uh, red belly woodpeckers do. But um, I will move to, uh, so Cape, Cape May is, um, is um, one of the top birding areas in the country. Um, it's easy to, to spend a couple of weeks there and not hit all the spots. Um, the point um, funnels of birds down, down to uh, Cape Island. So you have the Delaware Bay, the birds don't want to cross the Delaware Bay, they, they, they'll migrate south along the ocean, if you can see my arrow coming down. And, uh, and then some will fly across the bay or they'll move back up and around the Delaware Bay. Um, they, they regularly will get on the Christmas bird counts over 150 species of birds, one of the higher totals in the whole country. Um, there's um, maps that will list uh, this time of year. They have watches and some are starting to shut down. But number two up here in the upper right corner is Avalon Sea Watch. And there's a jetty there that sticks out into the ocean. So a lot of birds migrate down along the shore and then all of a sudden they're over land. So today they were seeing hundreds of red-throated loons migrate by this spot this morning. And, um, and this picks up more in November and, and goes uh, well into December. And um, there's no bad month in Cape May. And then you go up to the Bay Shore, you, you, um, uh, on the Delaware Bay, this is where you get your migration of, of shorebirds. In the, uh, in the spring, there's really some, uh, some great winter birding out here too with uh, sparrows, um, great, Great place to see seaside sparrows and Nelsons and uh, and sharp tail, um, and then you have uh, Bell Plain uh, up north here, and then but we're concentrating more. So this lists some of the places outside the map is um, is um, Ocean City Welcome Center, which is a, a rookery for herons. Um, it's occupied in April, um, well into July. And it's, um, it's an amazing place to go for photography. Um, so this is just a list of some of the, the different places on the, the peninsula. And then Cape Island, uh, this is, uh, wasn't an island, it was created when they put the, uh, the uh, canal in here to avoid the, uh, the rips, which uh, where the ocean meets the bay. You know, so uh, boats can come through the canal here 
And across here, this uh, mark is uh, the ferry terminal where the, it's a poor man's pelagic. Um, you could take, a, the, take the ferry across to uh, lose Delaware and, and it's, see uh, uh, wintering birds out there. It's a great place to see gannets and red-throated loons and you'll get Jaegers and uh, some other birds during the summer, a lot of dolphins. Um, every so often they'll get a humpback whale now off the coast here. Um, so uh, areas to bird here, uh, most people concentrate um, by the green and the, the bottom here. This is Cape May Meadows, number 16. And over 21 is the uh, state park. And there's a number of lakes here. They're not all on the, or ponds on the map that are great for waterfowl. And, um, you know, um, a lot of people start coming, stop coming down to, um, to Cape May in November. And the end of November is when you really start finding the rarities down here. Um, the, the last couple of days they've had uh, um, Western Kingbird and uh, Ash-throated Flycatcher. Um, you know, they're, they're getting a regular finch flight that we get. I had red crossbills fly over my house today down here. Um, and, you know, I, I'm considered a good birder up in, uh, in our area. And I come down to Cape May and I feel like an amateur. You know, there's, there's so many uh, young birders that come here and they get their feet wet and become passionate about it. And they have hearing so they could hear the birds and uh, they know the calls. Um, you know, there's uh, a number of authors that, uh, uh, bird books that live down in this area. Uh, Kevin Carlson, uh, uh, Richard Crosley, Michael Bryan, and uh, more people are coming out with them. Uh, Scott Whittle, who has a warbler uh, guide. Uh, it's, you know, you, you could spend time with them just by going to some of these places. Some of my fi favorite places are the meadows where I'm doing the owl banding number 16. Um, down at the state park where the hawk watch is 19 or walking any through the, anywhere through the state park. Uh, Coral Avenue uh, right here, Lily Lake and the Northwood Center. Um, this time of year you look for heat sinks where it, it may be a little warmer than air, other areas around protected from the north winds and, and birds will uh, stay there if there's food. So the Northwoods Center over here, number 23, is sheltered from the wind and um, and they they restored the habitat and it's it's a kind of a field of dreams if you plant it they will come and uh, it's just like our uh, uh, quote and point with the uh, the landfill they restored the landfill and now the birds are coming back and since they did the uh, the rehab on it, it it sounds like we're getting a lot more uh, birds this winter early on. Um, and then there's there's lesser known places. Over here, number 13 is Garrett Preserve. Um, it's got a, some overgrown fields and you have access to the uh, this inner salt marsh here. Um, the, the harbor can be good in the winter. Uh, one year they had an ivory gull there. Um, uh, Higby's Beach is uh, is a fall migration hotspot and, and in the spring. And, um, and this is where they do morning flight. Um, uh, there's other, uh, other areas uh, that really get overlooked um, and aren't even on the map. Um, um, but if you, if you come down here, they have uh, these maps readily available. Um, Here's a listing of, of uh, the places like uh, the State Park and the Hawk Watch, uh, Lily Lake, um, Hidden Valley, which uh, you really need directions to find that. It is uh, uh, hidden. Um, but there's, you can spend a week here and not hit all the spots. It's, uh, and you can find your own spots. Um, just along Sunset, um, 
it's one of um, it's not marked on this, and um, and it's one of Richard Crosley's favorite places to bird. Um, it, it's one of the few places where it has its own species of birds named after it, uh, Cape May warbler, even though they only just migrate through there. Um, but it is a great place to see them in the fall and uh, where the conditions are right in the spring, which this photo is from Cape May in the spring. Um, it's south of the Mason-Dixon line. So it, it gets a lot of Southern species. So now we have um, uh, Purple Martins up by us, but this was one of the best places to go see Purple Martins right in the state park and uh, by the lighthouse. Um, here's the, uh, the Hawk Watch. Um, you can come down here this time of year and uh, they had a great flight today. If you, if you time it to Northwest winds um, when they're over 10 miles an hour and today they were. So they had goshawks from the platform, a lot of red shoulders and, and other raptors. And uh, um, they still had uh, a late broadwing today. Uh, they're just, uh, for some reason, not migrating. Um, then you have the beanery um, that um, is um, in cooperation with uh, the Ray Farm. Um, they've had some incredible rarities in here. They had a, a section here last year they called it the magic field because they had so many different rare birds there. They had, um, they had hair sparrow and um, and uh, Pacific flycatcher and uh, a wood stork, it just go, list goes on and on. Um, one year they had a McGilvery's warbler there through the winter. Um, this is where the uh, morning flight is. It's on a, a drainage uh, a dike uh, for, for keeping the, uh, the canal clear of uh, sediment. And uh, they have somebody that mans that from uh, August into early November to count birds going by. And um, sometimes you'll even run into familiar people down there. Uh, this is Kyle Bardwell right there um, uh, watching uh, Warbler Street by. And um, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's the more time you spend the more you'll learn. And, and I'm constantly learning down here, uh, picking up different flights. You talk to some of these people and you know, they, they're so quick to call out a, uh, a Northern water thrush flying by. And it's like, you know, they're hearing it, which I couldn't hear, but um, it has a certain flight pattern. And after you see a hundred or so fly by, you start to pick up on that. It's just like, um, um, Eastern bluebirds, they kind of have an appearance of a humpback when they're flying. You know, so if you watch a bluebird fly, you may see that little hump to the back and it would help, um, help you pick them up in flight without hearing them. Um, South Cape May Meadows is a uh, nature conservancy property and it's, it's less meadows now than it was, but it's, it's great habitat. Um, a great place um, in earlier fall to get Virginia rail and uh, Sora rails. Uh, they've had uh, black rail reported from here and uh, yellow rail. Um, the, uh, it's a great place to observe flyovers of, uh, of, of golden eagles. I've seen multiple golden eagles uh, walking through the meadows. And, um, and the last Four years have had three yellow green vireos. Two of them were banded in the meadows, which is a Texas bird, uh, made it all the way up to Cape May. A beach plum farm. Um, I had a great discovery here last year. And what makes it even better is they sell food so you can get some sandwiches or a breakfast sandwich. And they, they welcome birders, but they had so many birders coming here, they started charging $5 on weekends unless you buy something. And they have a fresh market there too. And um, last year I stopped here because I took my nephew out um, birding for the first time. 
And I figured he'd be more interested if he had something to eat. And I found a, a mountain bluebird here, um, which we'll see later. This is the uh, coral uh, uh, watch. There's a uh, wheelchair uh, uh, accessible rant. Here's Kyle again, who make a day trip down here just to watch the spring migration. Um, the, uh, they, this is manned from March 1st to, um, to May 31st um, for spring flight. And um, uh, there's been th over 300 species of birds seen from this platform. And uh, this time of year, it's informally manned, but you can go there any morning and there'll be uh, somebody up there. And um, the, the person up there this morning had a long eared owl fly by and uh, pipits, uh, crossbills, uh, the list just goes on and on. Um, this is a newer place. It's kind of hidden, Garrett Family Preserve. And uh, it's, it's got nesting, um, chats there and blue grosbeaks, uh, thrashers. Um, and it's, it's a little quieter than some of the other places. And uh, you have access to soil marsh there. So you can see, um, see clapper rails and, uh, and um, uh, marsh wrens or uh, seaside sparrows. Um, some of the local breeders in, in Southern Jersey a uh, red-headed woodpecker. This was taken at the state park. A chat, um, which nest at the uh, state park, park and other places. Um, uh, blue grosbeaks are uh, common nesters down in Cape May. Um, White-eyed vireos. Um, marsh wrens. Um, but Outside of uh, Cape Island, uh, if you go up the Bay Shore, um, is where this was taken. And as long as you wear bug protection, it's incredible the, the photo opportunities you have at places like Jake's Landing um, for photographing uh, nest building birds, seaside sparrows, clapper rails running across the road. And there's so many places like that, Fortescue. Um, Right at, um, at Beach Plum Farm, um, uh, Prothonotary Warblers Nest, uh, Hidden Valley, um, any of the wetlands here, you're likely to find Prothonotaries. Um, uh, Clapper Rails, there's um, a restaurant called Lucky Bones right by Lobster House on uh, just across the bridge on Cape Island. And you sit in your car early in the morning and watch them run across the parking lot in the spring. Um, uh, seaside sparrows. Um, in, in the late summer and fall, you get this incredible flight of tree swallows. Um, and you go walk through, they'll come down, they, they, um, they eat the uh, bayberry. So you'll get these swarms of swallows by you and you just, stand there and they just ignore you. It's uh, a credible experience. Um, out on the, uh, on the bay in the ocean, um, you'll have red-throated loons. Uh, they they kind of gather there in the spring where uh, I'm standing in one spot in 15 minutes, I've counted over a hundred. Um, yeah, these used to be considered rare and now um, they're not reported anymore because they're pretty common. Um, Lesser blackback gull. This is more winter plumage and then summer plumage. And if you notice, the yellow legs is the uh, the key feature for identifying those. And I saw one from Coral today. Um, uh, there's no bad time of year. Um, this shot is taken up by Stone Harbor, which is uh, by 10 mile marker of the Garden State off of Cape Island. But I've seen all these birds on Cape Island, tricolored. Heron, I saw, I saw one last year in January, um, right across the bridge on Two Mile. Um, and then Little Blues and, um, and Great Egrets. Um, this shows you how close the ducks come and how relaxed they are around people. Here, here we have a couple of pintails 
and they were within 20 feet of this birder. Um, this time of year, you could easily see 20, 25 species of, of uh, waterfowl down in Cape May. And it's a great way to work on your, uh, on your ducks. Um, we have uh, blue winged teal here. You see the larger bill and the white hair and the, around the eye, you have, uh, have a partial eye ring. And then they'll show a little, besides that blue, they show a little green on their wing. Um, but they, here you have a green wing teal where it doesn't have a ring around the eye and uh, it has a smaller bill and the green on, on it. Um, I, I just couldn't get a shot of it um, with his head out of the water, is so busy feeding. But this was in, within 20 feet of me. Um, Trump, Trump uh, excuse me, tundra swans are, are regular now on uh, Bunker Pond, right, right off the of Hawk Watch, and widgeon. Um, there's Eurasian widgeon out there they get every year um, in about mid December until it freezes, which it doesn't seem to freeze anymore. And then uh, you may have cackling goose. This is on a little lake. This is what we call a Richardson form. It just looks like a miniature Canada goose. It doesn't have that stubby bill, but you see the size comparison, the same size as a mallard. Um, and then uh, uh, you get king eider sometimes off the, uh, off the jetties in Cape May or uh, Cape May Point. Uh, scoters are a common occurrence, all three species. Uh, a couple of years ago, they had over 100,000 white-winged scoters. And now for some reason, the last couple of years, they just don't seem to come down. They may be staying up on the Great Lakes. Um, here's the uh, surf scoter. And um, they're very photographable. Um, you'll see fishermen out on the jetties and, and the ducks just ignore them. Um, Yesterday, I had eight common eider uh, right off the jetty. Um, here's uh, blue winged teal um, in breeding plumage um, out in the meadows, Virginia reel. And uh, we still have uh, common gallinue down there and uh, sora rails. And, and if you go in October and just stand by a, by a marshy section, um, and stay still for an hour in the morning, these things will walk out where you can get uh, photos of them. Um, waterfowl give you great opportunities. And then the beaches, um, up until late October, you'll have these uh, day roofs of black skimmers with terns mixed in. And during the summer or the spring, you may get roseate terns or they've had uh, Arctic terns sitting down with these flocks. And uh, you can see um, how close they are to this, uh, this sunbather that they could care less about the people there as long as uh, um, the kids don't run through them. And uh, you'll see, see them here with uh, Forster terns um, and the winter plumage. And, and here's a shot. Um, uh, until I had this photo, I never realized how thin their bill is. And they'll drag that lower bill in the water and snap it closed. And you see it's, it's like a, a knife cutting down on the fish, how thin it is. Um, uh, we, this year we had an unsuccessful attempt uh, because they opened the beaches back up of uh, oyster catcher on my beach, uh, right on Brainerd Avenue. And they taped it off, but um, somebody brought their dog out, which they weren't supposed to, and they got the egg. Um, but uh, they do nest on the beaches down here, um, especially when uh, the beaches are closed. Um, in the fall, you get these hawk flights, which they had a great flight today. And you can see the defense of the uh, migrating birds, how they'll ball up in a red shoulder when there's a raptor around. And, um, I think uh, Kyle hit one of the flights down here at Coral where they had over 5,000 kestrels passing a day. And you just never know what you're gonna find down here. Um, here's a Merlin flying by Coral, which I was lucky to get the shot. And if you look closely, 
Um, this may be a butter butt that it's carrying. Um, I don't know if anybody can identify that. Maybe Tom Burke can, Tom. Um, but uh, uh, it's, it's really a magical place. Uh, eagles breed down here. Um, that's off the ocean. Um, uh, wintering gulls, Iceland gull, and then um, uh, hawks. Uh, I'm lucky enough to ban down here. So uh, a Shropshire hawk and uh, adult uh, uh, northern harrier. And if you just drive down the road and look at the wires, um, anywhere from uh, from the 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 light, uh, the last light on sunset, all the way down, you'll have peregrines or merlins perched up there on top of the uh, poles or wires. Um, uh, so it's my migrate through the point. Um, one day this year, we've caught uh, 33 in one night. Another night we had um, 25. Uh, they've had nights where they're caught over 90. And you could, if you're lucky enough and you look hard enough, you find them in the state park roosting during the day. And, and this shows you that this is a, uh, um, at least a two-year-old bird because it's got the new feathers in black light will show pink and, uh, and the older ones don't show the pink. So with molt pattern, you can get an idea of the age of the bird. And uh, this year we're lucky enough to catch a shorted owl, um, long eared owls who catch uh, a couple each year. And uh, my hands will attest to that because they like to bite and, uh, and foot you any chance they get. And they're a little more than a needle prick. And then uh, a great horned owl. Um, and you don't want to mess with these talons. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty powerful bird. And in spring migration, uh, this is a bird bath I set up with a drip. Um, it's a great place. Um, if you get impatient for waiting for uh, warblers to come up north in April, um, the end of April, you'll start seeing them down there. Um, the southern ones will set up territory earlier up in Belle Plaine, um, which is uh, within half an hour drive or 45 minute drive from where I am. And so you have uh, breeding hooded and uh, less now than they used to, but Kentucky, um, worm eating, um, uh, uh, yellow throated and uh, prothonotary. Nice. Um, um, morning warblers um, and migration. This is one with banded. Um, this is in the Northwood Center. They restored the habitat. And pokeberry, a lot of people pull it out. They consider it a weed, but it's great food for warblers. There's over 20 species of warblers that'll feed on pokeberry. And, uh, and it's good for migration for, um, for orange crown warblers. We'll still find some now. They usually get them on the Christmas bird count. Um, in the spring, you get a good migration of uh, Mississippi kite. Uh, you see them come off. Uh, somebody has a shot of 20 coming off the bay uh, at Coral Avenue. And uh, if you're lucky enough, um, sometimes a, a, a swallowtail kite will overshoot and, uh, and stop at Cape May for a little while. Uh, brown pelicans from the uh, Coral Avenue. Um, I threw this shot in, belted kingfisher. Um, they winter down here in good numbers. You go out to the Bay Shore. But when I took this shot, I never noticed. This is just a reminder to look at your habitat. There was a uh, black crown night here and roosting in here. And I didn't see it until I, uh, I looked at the photo later. Uh, cattle egret, we just had them up at Croton Point. Um, we see them more often down here. Uh, Sedren, um, uh, over, this was at the Meadows, um, and um, they'll get a number of them this time of year 
up on the Bay Shore at Jake's Landing and other places, if you go out and look. And this was taken at the State Park, Bitterns. I saw one a couple of weeks ago. I, I scared it out of uh, a flooded section of my banding station. Um, but um, it, it's, uh, if you, you look, um, they're, they're there, um, very secretive bird. Um, in the summer, you get overshoots, uh, black belly whistling ducks in the state park, black net stilts. Um, when the water level is low, um, the meadows is a great place for, for uh, shorebirds. This is a, a new confirmed nester at, um, in Jersey at uh, Ocean City uh, Welcome Center at the Rookery. And um, they're uh, fairly common flying over the state park now or feeding in the state park. Uh, white pelican, this was a shot I took from a hawk banding station um, flying by one fall. Uh, Sandhill cranes, they reported four the last week. And now again, I'm flying by Croton Point, I heard. Um, uh, Avocets, again, at the state park. Um, you know, you, you come down here any month of the year, you're going to see birds. Um, this is off a of coral. Uh, parasitic Jaegers. Um, uh, they've seen all three species of Jaegers from uh, Coral Watch. A good luck identifying them. This is a Meadows this spring. Um, and here's a Wilson's Phalarope. And you could pick up other thing, easy things like Dunlin, some yellow legs. And I'm sure if you look through there, you'll find something else. Um, uh, the sparrows uh, migrating through um, Cape May, um, oops, sorry. and uh, we caught a crow's beak down here this year. Um, this overwintered last year, Western Kingbird. Um, Astro and Flycatcher overwintered. They've had at least three this year uh, reported down here. The switch to the berries. Um, the last three, four years in a row, they've had Swainson's warbler singing at Higby's uh, on Cape Island, trying to establish territory. Huh. You know, so it's coming. And this is a bird I found last year and, uh, and the Beach Plum Farm, it, it kind of was a surprise. I had a beginning birder with me. I think that's the only reason I found it. Um, I ripped the binoculars out of his hand because I only had one pair of binoculars. You know, when I took a photo of it, I said, nope, it's not a young, young Eastern bluebird. Um, and uh, this fall, we had a, a black-throated gray warbler. So I was lucky enough to see that. Um, they have um, the low HUD bird alert was modeled after um, the, uh, the Cape May uh, bird alert. You know, so you can go down there and now they're on, on my, ch my chat, I think it is, um, where they can include you on and you get notifications. And um, you know, it's great for birding groups uh, coming down to uh, Cape May. This is at the Brainerd Watch. A lot of people come here for the sunset. I see Ann up here in the back. And I'm, I, I know there's some other people that are, uh, are on this chat tonight you may recognize. And, uh, and then here's the sunset and here's Kyle again. He must spend a lot of time in Cape May. <laughs> um, uh, Mike O'Brien, an incredible birder, Dick Walton, and then uh, the sunset at Cape May. Okay, Ann, back to you. Great, somebody just asked in chat about your mountain bluebird. Um, folks, feel free to add comments and questions. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, great content. Um, the, the mountain bluebird, um, they found it on, um, on Friday morning after Thanksgiving. Um, I had been birding a couple of days and my nephew in Florida was staying with us and he wanted to see what this birding thing was. So I took him out. I only had my pair of binoculars and my camera. So I gave him the binoculars and I had the scope and we went to Lily Lake first and, uh, the bird that impressed them the most that day was a great blue heron. 
And uh, the only reason I went to Beach Plum is because they were open and they were selling egg sandwiches so I could feed them. And uh, I was lucky enough to find that bird. And it stayed around for a couple of weeks before they think a Cooper's hawk got it and they found the feathers. Wow. So, uh, cool. It was uh, a lot of people got excited about it. And, and that's it. You go out, you never know what you're going to find. You know, at Croton Point anywhere. I, I, it's amazing they had a sage thrasher in upstate New York. And uh, those birds that come east, they go south. And that's what makes Cape May so great is it just squeezes those rare birds into a tight spot. And, right. uh, so a lot of comments in the chat, a lot of uh, positive comments, wonderful to see. People asking, I forgot to ask your permission, Charlie, but I hope it's all right. I did record. I'm going to turn off the recording now. Um, so folks, you can feel free to either show your, uh, oops, I just turned off the screen share. Okay, let me uh, resume the share. Um, yep, here we go. Stop recording. Very good.